would be earnings per share. This really is just using whatever you see here as net income. We divide it by the number of shares outstanding. That's all it is to this EPS measure. This measure is often used by creditors and investors too to evaluate, compare different businesses' earnings that can be attributed, can be designated to each share. So if I own a share that has earnings value EPS, let's say $3 or $4, compared to other companies' earnings per share is only $1 or $2, my shares of the bill shares that I own right now is more attracted to their shares. Okay, so this is the number of shares that can be assigned to the number of earnings, the amount of earnings that can be assigned to the number of shares. So for each share that shareholders own, what is their earnings value to? It's, that's what this measure is. If you look at the uh, formula, it's actually very similar to ROE. Remember, rate of return on equity. The only difference is that the denominator part at that time is the total, the average equity here is the average number of shares. So it's just another perspective to look at it. You can look at it as rate of return on every dollar of equity, common shareholders, contributors to the company. This is looking at the number of earnings that can be assigned to each share. So if you and I own different company shares, we can compare our EPS and understand which of our shares has slightly higher value assign more earnings to the number of shares that you own. That basically means the value of the share usually is higher than other companies. Okay, so this part here is just a calculation of how we get to net income. But really what is considered EPS is this, $3.50. So upper part net income, $63,000. If there's no preferred shareholders, then that will be it. So we divide it by 20,000. Now the formula tells you the average number, but usually for other problems you see pretty much would just be one number. It will tell you the total outstanding shares is 20,000. You just use this directly. You don't necessarily need to add the beginning and the end. It doesn't tell you what is the beginning shares and ending shares. So most of the problems you see in this problem, even though it tells you average, but usually it's just the total outstanding shares as of now. Okay, so it's 40,000 shares, and you just divide by this is a case without preferred dividends. We're just considering total net income. If this company didn't issue preferred shares, then we don't subtract anything. Okay, now in case there is preferred shares, 